Now, in today's session, we are basically going to be looking at the concept of caching. All right, that is exactly what we want to look at. Now, it's going to be a very quick, um, a very quick uh, one. All right. So, but basically, we just want to look at the concept of how we can cache. All right, our you know some basically some dependencies that our application would download uh, when our job is running. All right, how can we make that available? All right, for other jobs, you know, basically that's what we want to look at. Now, when you look at this run unit test, right, we have a command here which is npm install. Now, when you run the npm install, it's obviously going to download some dependencies that our application would need, all right, to run. Now, those dependencies are downloaded into the folder that is called the node modules, all right, folder, basically, right? Now, if you, you can have another job, for example, if you have a job like this, which is the run lint test, just an example, right? Now, that job also requires, you know, the npm install, right? Because, I mean, if you look at our job very very well we are actually running our job inside of a docker container right so we're using a docker executor all right to basically run our job so which means each of the jobs will be run inside all right of a different container right so that means if we say npm install here the first container that will run this job would actually have to download all of those dependencies for this job and then after this job is completed the container is basically deleted right and then the second job here as well will also do the same thing so it will create its own container run its job inside of the container and once the job is done the container is basically deleted right now what we can do actually is that now the npm install will generate the node mode Modules, right so what can we do to basically keep all of the dependencies that has been downloaded by this first job so that this second job will not have to download the same dependency all over again even though the job is going to run in another container all right and that is where the concept of caching all right actually comes into the picture right now here we can actually do a few things we can come here for example all right, and then, you know, just specify a cache like this. Oh, sorry, you can specify a cache here, all right, and then you can come here and give your cache, all right, a key name, basically, you know, just to name your cache, right? Or you can use some predefined environment variable, all right, for this particular purpose, okay? Now, one thing I need to mention here is that when you define something at this level, right when you define something outside of the jobs, okay, basically, it becomes global. All right, which means if I define the cache at this level, it becomes available to every job, all right, that needs to use it, okay? But of course, if I over around it, you will see here, it says defining cache globally is deprecated, all right? It says use default instead. So which means defining your cache like this at the global level, right, is no longer supported by the GitLab, all right, CI, CD pipeline, right? So what we can do actually is to come into the jobs and define the cache, right? Because, I mean, if you define it anything globally it basically means it is available for every job okay more like the variables that we defined here so the variable defined here you right it's a global declaration which means any job can actually connect or use these variables okay so when you define anything outside of the job space it becomes all right global for example now if i come here and i say image all right if i say image like this for example and i say it's equal to node 22 alpine now what i am basically saying is that every job will use all right this particular image right now if i want to override this particular declaration what i can do is now to go into the jobs all right and then define the image all right that i want each job to now use but if i come here and i define image like this at the global level like this it means that every of my job will use the node 22 all right image Okay, so that is basically define things at a global level. So if I come here also and I define this cache at this level, it means that technically that all my jobs will actually use the cache. So even the ones that don't need to catch anything will actually see, all right, that they need to do some caching, right? So we can do this instead. So we can go up here to the job. So my run unit test needs to, you know, catch, you know, the node models and all of that. So I'll come here uh, and say cache. All right, and then here I will basically specify the key that I want. So the key, it's more like a name, okay, of your cache. All right, that's what it means basically. So, and here we can actually use an environment variable. Okay, we can use this environment variable, uh, you know, ci commit. Okay, ci commit underscore ref. So basically, we want to reference the commit name. 
right, as we want to reference, right? And then we need to specify the path, right? So basically, what, what is the thing that we are caching exactly, right? Of course, for example, like the active fat, we basically are caching, all right, this is the unit tested XML. So that is basically the file that we're looking to, all right, to store. Okay, so by the time the job runs and then your job produces this particular file, it basically knows to, all right, to keep this as an active file that can be downloaded, all right, and all of that, or they can be used in any other job, right? So in our own case, we need to specify the folder that we are actually looking to, to cache, all right? So we need to look at that. So here, I can see, well, the folder is actually going to be generated in the app, all right, you know, underscore app slash node modules, all right, app slash node underscore modules, right? So that's the uh, thing, basically. So, of course, if you look at it here, also, you can see that the folder was generated here as well. So basically, what I'm saying now is that I am actually, all right, caching this particular, all right, folder. So which means by the time the job runs, of course, there's a folder that will be created called node underscore modules. So basically, I'm telling my GitLab pipeline to say, if you see any folder generated by this name, or I basically catch, all right, that for me. And that's exactly what we're specifying here, all right? Now, here, you can actually also copy this and then go to the other job that needs it. So, for example, this job also needs, all right, to use this because, I mean, by the time this node underscore modules has been cached, right, this other job will not have to download, all right, all of those dependencies again. It will basically just leverage, you know, the catch that has been you know, the, the folder that have been cached already, and then it to use all of those dependencies to do its own job, all right, as well. And that is basically the purpose of caching. So the purpose of caching here is to help us to reduce the build time, all right, as much as we can, right? That's just basically what caching is about, right? Helps, helps you to reduce the build time that is required, all right, to build your jobs. And that is exactly what caching is about. I'm sure you can be wondering, what about Actifact? Now, Actifact is basically... All right, the idea behind Actifad is basically to help us, all right, to, you know, uh, to pass intermediate build results, all right, between stages, okay? That is basically what Actifad is about. So, for example, if I need a particular environment variable, all right, to be available to the next job, I can use an Actifad to store the variable, all right, you know, from the job that generated it and then make it available to the next job. Right. So that is basically what Actifat is about. But in the case of caching, caching basically means, you know, you have some dependencies that your application has downloaded. All right. And then you want to make that dependencies available to other jobs, right? You can cache that dependencies instead. Okay. Instead of using Actifat. All right. For that particular purpose. Okay. So that's basically the difference between the two. All right. Of them. So let's run this and let's see what happens. Now, what I'm going to do basically is I'm just going to copy out all of these ones, right? We don't need to do all of this. Okay. So we just want to test out, um, you know, uh, caching and all of that. So I'm just going to create a new file here. All right. So let's just put something here. I'm just going to say ci.yml. All right. And then just, you know, just put this here for now. All right. We can even actually just go to git ignore. All right. And just excuse that from the repo. Okay. So that it won't, I mean, it won't put that into a repository. Okay. So we can ignore that as well. So here I'm just going to say git commit. All right. I think am. Okay. And then I'll just basically say, all right, catching add it. All right. To the pipeline. All right. So let's test that and let's see what happens. So I'm going to say git push now. All right. So let's see how this all right, caching works and let's see what happens here. So I'm going to go to the pipeline. Of course, we're going to build and then click on pipeline. And then our pipeline should be triggered right now. So let's see uh, what happens in that regard. Okay. Okay. Do we have any trigger yet? Okay. We don't have any trigger just yet. Uh, all right, so, okay, so caching had it to the pipeline, so we can see that right here. So this was updated, okay? So let's go back to pipelines, let's see. Why is the pipeline not being, all right, triggered? Okay, the pipeline is not triggered, so let's see uh, what is going on with that, all right? Why the pipeline is not being triggered? So I'm going to go back to my, um, I'm going to go back to this space. All right, so let's see that. Oh, okay, so now the pipeline has started. So you say pipeline pending right here. 
Okay, you can see that same pipeline pending. So I don't know why it took time, all right? But then sometimes it happens like that. So we can click on pipeline again. Of course, we can see now that the pipeline as wow, I mean, before we even blinked our eyes, the pipeline has you know passed already. So here you can see that it says pipeline passed. So let's go to the pipeline and let's examine all right with the concept you know that we just looked at. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I can see that my two jobs completed, all right, in just about 26 seconds, all right, it was queued for 70 seconds. I mean, that explains why it took it time to, you know, to basically execute. So let's click on the run unit test and let's look at the job logs and let's see, all right, what happened. All right, so this one took um, 17 seconds, all right, to actually execute. So let's see what happens here now. Here, look at what you have here. So we said NPM installed and it says it is what? Up to date, right? So basically it was leveraging some kind of caching all right there. And then here, you look at it, it says cache will be stored on only locally, right? And then here it says created cache, right? So which means, I mean, it was pretty much, it was pretty fast. So it created a cage and then everything that we did here was actually put inside of that. So there are 398 packages in two seconds, right? Now, if I go to the other job, the run link test, now we will see that that actually completed in just nine seconds, right? Because I mean, the caching was basically already available for this job, right? So it didn't have to download its own dependencies again. Right. So now look at what it says. It says instead a local version of catch will what will be extracted. So it means it didn't have to right download all the dependencies again. Right. It basically just leveraged what was already available right in the cache. Right. That was what it leveraged. Okay. And then here it says inside of this particular all right folder it says about six thousand two fifty matching active files and directory were actually all right found. Okay.